That's enough playing about. Anyway, this is the Roland TR909 uh, Rhythm Composer. It doesn't belong to me, it belongs to a friend of mine. I've got the uh, TR8, I did a video earlier about that. And uh, it's good enough for me. Uh, I can't afford the original uh, machine, but the TR8 you know, is close enough for what I want to do. Anyway, the Roland TR909 came out in 1983. And it's the brainchild of Tadeo Kikumoto, who was also the engineer behind the TB303 as well. So, brilliant. Uh, this is not all analogue. I mean, people think this is uh, an entirely analogue machine. It's not true. The hi-hat and the cymbal are actually 6-bit uh, samples. And then it goes through a bit more analogue extras and things and uh, that's what gives it its magic and makes it sound so wonderful but uh, the first time I heard this was uh, Phil Collins did Take Me Home and S -S -S Studio uh, if I said that right don't know uh, Dennis Ferrer who's a New York DJ and producer and, and things he actually said oh he wants to be buried with his TR909 so I'm going to be along with my shovel and get it back. Anyway, uh, enough rabbiting on, I'm going to get this thing open and we can have a look inside and see what makes it tick. These were made from 1983 to 1985 and there was four different ROM versions for them. To find out which ROM version this is, you hold track play 1 and switch on. And here you see button number 1 flashing, so this is the early one, this is ROM version 1, the early version. So, just a little bit of information. I know you can tell by serial numbers and things, but uh, I haven't got those detailed. Anyway, let's get this thing opened. Right, after a bit of a battle getting the plastic buttons off, I've turned it over, and now we'll remove the back. Oh, baby, look at that. Very nice. There's a couple of batteries there for your memory backup. And uh, this is the connection for uh, a memory card. You can put a M64C in there. Have I got that right? Yes, M64C. Wow, did that from memory. Very good. Uh, yeah, and it's all single sided through hole components on it. So, let me think, what I have to do here to take this beastie apart is remove these back plates first. They contain all your ins and outs. See, these have separate outputs for all the multi-outs for your clap and rim shots, high toms, mids, lows, snares, etc. And you've got a, a, a tape sync there as well. Midi in, out and through. Uh, and these you could actually save things to a cassette. Oh, the good old days. Anyway, I'll take these apart and get these out. And then we might be able to get the main board out and flip it over. You have to remove these two boards before you can take out the bottom board there. This one's got all the MIDI and everything on it. And the tape, trigger, etc. But it's got a, a ground lead on. So I'm not going to unsolder that. I've just disconnected it and I'm going to put it to one side. And then this board has to come out. This is your main left and right. And then all your individual outputs on there. Very nice simple board. And just plugs onto the main board with a few resistors. And yeah, nice simple little bit of construction there. But very handy. Uh, now I'm going to try and lift this out. Okay, I've managed to release all the board by pulling a lot of the multi-connectors out and now I can flip it over. But before I do that, this has still got its batteries attached to it for its internal memory. So something somewhere is holding uh, a bit of memory in there and I don't know if the customer's got a rhythm that he wants to save in there. So before I flip it over onto this piece of metal at the back here, I'm just going to put a bit of tape across there because 
these will make contact with the metal and I know it's powder coated and things but for the sake of a little bit of tape I'm not going to go and upset anything. So flip it over and here's the internals of this beautiful vintage drum machine. I'll just get the camera off its stand and we can have a closer look at it. Okay, here's a good look at the actual circuit board of the 909. Uh, quite heavily populated. Lots and lots of analogue components everywhere. Plenty, plenty of chips. Uh, let's have a look into some of these. These are HD 14174s. Loads and loads and loads of those. They're D-type flip-flops all over the place. Lots and lots and lots of them. D-type flip-flops. These ones standing up, they're monolithic. They're called monolithics. That's the M518. Well, they're all op-amps. That's these bits here. Oh, hang on. Let me get in the camera. These are all op-amps. Lots, 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 and lots of them. Quite a, quite a bit of money's worth there when you're building designing and building something like this. What we've got over here, uh, yeah, 4013, that's another D-type flip-flop. Uh, 4011, that's a two-input NAND gate. I can't remember all of these. Uh, these big ones here, uh, HN61256, they are programmable ROMs. One, two, and there's a third one down here as well. So. That's programmable for, well, however you want to program this thing. Now basically what I want to do in here is get down on all these pots and actually clean the track inside the pot with, you know, just a bit of spray cleaner, that's all. And if we're lucky, on the back of them here, you'll see this just a little bit of a gap there. And that is where I'm going to spray the cleaner and turn it around a few times. And I'll work my way across the whole lot of them. And then I'll try and have a look about fixing the button on the front of this unit. So I'll put this camera to, to an angle for a bit so you can watch me cleaning pots if you wish. Actually I've changed my mind about going in at the back of these. I've just realised on these pots there's quite a little bit of a gap just above the contacts there and I can just spray in there just a little spray like so give it a few turns and remove a bit of crud from underneath it yeah feels looser already and we do that to all of them uh, I'm not going to leave this video going so you can watch me doing every single one of them because that would be boring yeah. So I've, I've put cleaner in every single pot here and turned them backwards and forwards several times and they f feel a bit looser. Uh, yeah, feels much better that. Of course I've just realised there's one pot missing and that's the tempo pot. That's going to be down here on the actual switching board. The board with the switches and the LEDs on. So looks like I'm going to have to lift this up as well. Move this card out of the way and uh, oh yeah these are simple enough. Just unbolt these posts and then we'll be able to get the uh, switch gear up. Well it seems I've just figured out the problem as to why the buttons uh, feel a bit wonky like you're pushing it through the board four of the posts, that's these little things, these are normally TIG welded to the metalwork and then the board is screwed down onto those and all four, one, two, three, four of them are actually come undone. Now I don't know how I'm going to set those back down to the metal case, you know, it's not just a case of gluing it because they won't last. So I might have to put a little bit of padding behind here to stop this lot pushing in and out. Oh well, I'll have a look at that. I'll just clean the tempo pot here and then we'll see what I can do about fixing this. A 
little bit of cleaner in the tempo pot. Very nice. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go and scratch my head now and figure out how I can repair these four posts. Okay, I've come to the conclusion the only way to stick this back down, these posts, is with a bit of good old Araldite. I mean, it's been done before because there's already glue on these two, so it's already been repaired. Obviously, over the years, bashing away at these buttons, it's, you know, wear and tear. It started to pull all these tabs off the main casing. The top ones are fine because there's no pressure being put up there. Anyway, uh, I'll have a go at the owl diet and I'll put a, a bit of packing behind the board when I assemble it and that might, uh, well, hold it all together for a bit. Just a quick look across this board anyway. I mean, you've got all your little flip-flops and things again. A uh, little 12 meg crystal here. There's your nice display. Uh, now this is your EEPROM. Uh, there was, like I say earlier in the video, this four versions. Now you can buy an updated EEPROM and pull that out and put a new one in. I mean, I wouldn't want to do that job. It's it's a bit of a pain in the neck. Can't be bothered. But uh, yeah, and your main processor for you know setting your drum rhythms and and things, because the ROMs that we saw on the top, the three ROMs that we saw on the top, is actually for the ride, the crash, and the hi hat. So that just holds the information for those three, you know, the six bit six bit samples. Okay, well, I'm gonna get some aldite mixed and put these posts back down again. Rather than put the actual glue on the posts and have it all squishing around down here, they're a bit close to the buttons, and I don't want anything to transfer across to these buttons. So I've uh, mixed the aldite until it goes like a, a nice winter's cold sort of runny nose and I can see where the posts are going to land so I'm going to put actually directly onto the metal there just a bit not too much because I don't want it to run up inside the screw thread and glue the screws down because you know in years to come somebody might have to undo this again and do some more work on it and it won't be very nice if all the screw threads were glued down. So I'll just put a little bit of a blob where I can see that the posts should sit. And then, oh, it's getting nice and nice and tacky now, that is. And then I'll just put the board down onto it and get some, some of the other screws in. Then I'll know this is in line. Yeah, very nice. Oh. Got to get it nice and tacky. Mix it and get plenty of air in there. But I'll put some padding behind them as well, behind the board, because this is not an absolute fix. All right, before that starts to set, let's get this board in place. And line it up to there. Just make sure the buttons still press. Yeah, and then I know I've got it lined up. I'm going to put a couple of screws in just for the moment, and then we get a weight on there. It should be okay. One in this corner and one in that corner. Actually, it's a post that lives in that corner. So, so our post goes in that corner. There you go. So on the board here, you can see there's sort of tiny dotted lines running around. And there's all like little sections to say this section here. Uh, and all these components makes the sound of the rim shot. And then this section here, which is all marked out with these little tiny dots, that's the high tom. And it's, uh, there you go, 
this is the snare drum, say so there, and then there's like the little dots running around to so say this section is a snare drum. So yeah, the components, uh, analog components necessary uh, just to make the sound of a snare drum. I mean, you know, there's there's quite a lot going on there, and so on and so forth. And there you can see, look, there's the hand clap. So the hand clap, if you follow the tracer around, there's, there's quite a a few components just to make the sound of a hand clap. But yeah, there's your hi-hat program ball run. And there's your crash, and that's your ride. But uh, yeah, very nice. And they do all that in analog circuit behavior chip now, which a lot of people argue whether it sounds better or worse or whatever. It sounds okay. It's it's uh, ex acceptable for me anyway. Uh, I've got the main board screwed down. Uh, just put the the ins and outs on now. I've put a little bit of tape where the battery lead comes through this metal casing because I've noticed it's starting to cut through the insulation on the wire through simply wobbling around against a, a sharp metal edge. So I've put some tape there to protect it for the future. Yeah. Now I'll do the last little job of finding out what uh, depth I need a little bit of wood or something. Okay, 29. 29 mil should do lovely. Little piece of wood wedged in there and wedged in there. That should that should do the job, and stop the buttons pushing the board back up again. Okay, I've glued the posts to hold down the board that holds the buttons there, but mm, just to give it a bit more strength. I've cut some pieces of this hard foam and slid that along the inside so it's pushing on the back of the board and then when I put the back on that'll hold the top and hopefully that'll stop it, uh, well at least stop the glue giving way and hold the buttons in place so they don't push in anymore, so they're not squishy. So yeah, I think that might do the job there. So get the sides on, get the back cover on, and uh, get it fired up. It's all back together again. There's no scratching. All the pots have been clean. And more importantly, the buttons don't push down anymore because I've put a bit of this stuff behind it. So I should keep it going for another 30 years maybe, with any luck. Well, I don't really want to give this back, but this isn't mine, you know, it's just a, a little repair job. Very nice indeed. Oh well, I hope you found something interesting in that. Uh, I'm hoping to get my hands on the 808 next, where we can have a look inside that and see how that ticks. But, thank you very much for watching. Oh, by the way, did I mention I've got one of these? So, ah. Uh, might have a play with that in another video. But thanks for watching anyway. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. All the best. Thank you.